Look. Right. There. That's <laughs> me. That's hello. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I got a fun video today. Uh, one that I've spent some time on. I've got notes. I've got notes. That's different. Um, we're going to go through something. Me as a big YouTube nerd in general, but also you as big nerds of YouTube golf and fans of YouTube golf. I think are going to find this interesting. So be sure to hop into that comment. Hit that subscribe button for me. We're getting sniffing up close to that 25K mark. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me. That'd be awesome. That would that would do a lot for me. All right, um, let's just jump right into it. There has been a lot of conversation recently around the Good Good Championships. The 63-man field video, we had some kind of ups and downs and slight dramas yesterday or two days ago when it was released because we had the release time kind of like scheduled and then it was like pushed back but guaranteed and then it wasn't met and then... Things happen, right? Export issues, 120 minute, 120 minute. Is that correct? No, not quite 120 minute, 90 minute, hour and 20 minute, there we go. Hour and 20 minute ish video uploaded. Oh my goodness, 63 people playing golf across 18 holes condensed in a way, honestly, that was like, I think extremely well done. Like I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I think their ability to condense all of that golf and still kind of bring you along and tell like the storytelling in that video for me was really what separated it. Like it wasn't just eight hours of like watch people hit golf shots. It was an hour and 20 of following along key players and key stories and building up suspense and kind of showing all the way to the end in the playoff holes, how people were getting into the 12 man field, who was gonna make it. And again, following those people along for the entirety of the video, showing the key points in their 18 hole stretches. It was really exciting. You didn't see this, but they had minimum 20 staff minimum 20 people walking around that event like good good people that they i guess flew out from like dallas or wherever they live into arizona and put them up for an entire week to give you some context re and i spent nearly probably three thousand dollars just for the two of us to get there stay for a week and get back so you account for that across 20 people then you take the fact that those 20 people have real jobs like the jobs they were doing at the Good Good Championship probably wasn't their real jobs. Their real jobs for Good Good are probably things that make Good Good money in other ways, on the apparel side, on the social side, whatever. They were fully committed to this tournament. Like this tournament was a large lift event. There was a lot going on. There was a lot that needed to happen. They were doing this event to make noise in the YouTube golf space, to do something that hasn't been done before, to do something they were all so passionate about. Like Garrett talked about the fact that this was gonna be his favorite YouTube video of all time. It's one that he was extremely excited for. It's one that he couldn't wait to show people, something that he had been building to for years on Good Good. And it's cool. It's not only to make something a big statement in the YouTube golf world, which obviously they did, but it was also to give these pros an opportunity to do what I said at the beginning, to play for a relatively extremely low entry fee for an astronomically high upside to that entry fee. The registration fee for this event was nothing, by the way. Luke Kwan talked about it. I don't, I don't even remember the exact number. I think it was like maybe $250, maybe, for an opportunity to win $50,000. Like Luke Kwan said it, he had to convince a bunch of golfers that this wasn't a scam because like, in no pro golf event ever has there ever been that low of a buy-in for that high of an upside. They talked about like a, a usual event they go play in in a mini tour is like $2,500 just to get in. You miss the cut, you're out that money, gone, bye. And even the top prize in that kind of event, like relative to the $2,500 entry fee is nowhere near the relative upside of it, whatever it was, $250. I'm just guessing on that. I think it was about that up uh, fee to $50,000 to win. That's incredible. Not alone. The fact that they're going to be featured in a good good video which for their own personal brands is huge especially if they make it into that final 12 field their social credit is going to go up if they're creating content that's going to be huge for them and most aspiring pro golfers nowadays are they're either doing tiktoks they're doing instagrams they're doing something to build some sort of brand awareness so they can get some help with sponsors well this is going to astronomically shoot them into the stars compared to what they'd be able to do on their own so there's a lot that went into this video and there's a lot of upside to it that isn't monetary but the upside it's it's for good good sort of but really it's for the community like as a youtube golf community enthusiast it's great because we see the success of a tournament we see a tournament and how exciting it to me and how many views it can pull and i think Google did an amazing job with the title thumbnail on this i think it's going to reach outside of just the classic youtube golf audience like it's going to have some mass appeal like this is going to show what a tournament like this can do in this space and hopefully provide more for us the consumers of youtube golf content but also just huge for the world of pro golf huge for good good huge for so many reasons so Overall, such an amazing video. Storytelling was amazing. I loved watching it. And yeah, those were some of my interesting takes from a relatively massive splash in the YouTube golf community. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.